you're stuck in your head, you can't deeply connect with anything that you're doing. Alright, let's just see what this looks like. Welcome, fam. Hi. Alright. I have not made a video in a while. And the main reason for that is because I went through a time period in which it was really difficult for me to create anything. The process of doing something that I didn't enjoy, it felt very painful. And I'm sure that this is something that a lot of us feel when we're trying to force ourselves to do something that we don't want to do, that we don't find any intrinsic value in. And I took this seriously. It even felt to the extent that I was incapable of forcing myself to do anything. And I was operating in that mindset. I needed to force myself. I needed to fight with myself in order to get to where I wanted to go, in order to be in a happier place. This entire paradigm, this entire lens of viewing the world and how we become happy and how we live our lives, this is the paradigm of the general vibe in the United States at the moment, maybe more East Coast than West Coast. People want to work so hard to get to a point in which they think is more beautiful than where they currently are. But we never ask ourselves why we think that what we want is actually going to make us happy. And I ultimately came to that question not knowing the answer. We assume that it's external things that make us happy. Certain situations are for us. We are dancers, if you love dancing. We are painters, if you love painting. We are mathematicians, writers, etc., etc. Whatever you have been open to, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Whatever you have developed, whatever you have grown up to experience beauty in is what you identify with. This can take a very crude form in identifying with your race, nationality, etc but can take a very subtle and insidious form in closing off certain aspects of life that could be just as, if not more beautiful, if we were just open and as receptive as we were when we were kids. Thinking everything is cool, trying everything, um, getting bored with the things that aren't for us, but still keeping that level of openness. And so, I want to get to the point. I ultimately realized that it isn't certain things that make us happy. There are not certain things that we jive with more than others, although there can be that little bit of talent that people have. However, in terms of actually experiencing beauty in something, you know, you don't have to be talented to enjoy something. There are kids who are talented in certain fields that don't enjoy those talents, and there are people who are completely <laughs> novice at certain practices that enjoy them with a deep and honest passion. For example, I just took up skating, and I made a video in which I learned how to drop into a ramp that's like six feet tall, which is fairly difficult for a beginner, but extremely easy for a professional. It's par for the course. Yet, an experience like that gave me so much bliss and joy because I was able to be open to trying something new and enjoying it in a way that kids are, but in a way that nobody seems to be when they're adults. We get stuck in a box, and it's that box, the accumulated knowledge and identity of who we are, and the things that we're attached to, and the things that we're avoiding, that's all in the mind, that creates a screen between you and the beautiful harmony of life that exists right now. When we travel, we enjoy, but we're not enjoying because of the novelty. Although the novelty really helps us be present with the moment and take everything in, it's the openness and willingness to receive and be present and not create a screen or a distance between yourself and something else that creates a level of harmony that's actually physically felt. Because if you're stuck in your head, and I'm sure that you've experienced this before as an individual, you can't deeply connect with anything that you're doing. I'm getting late for work, so I'm going to continue this video on the commute. Come along.
so now that I've arrived on the bus, I can tell you a little bit about what I've been coming to realize. I was going to say going through, but I'm not going to be that pessimistic. So we can be fearfully and anxiously driven toward the future, leading to a life that never ends in terms of that anxiety and fear. That's the dumbest thing. And we think that if we don't have that anxiety and fear of getting to where we want to be in quotations, then we won't move. And for a little bit when I was practicing letting go of that, I didn't move. I spent a lot of time inside, chilling, meditating, relaxing, living life passively. Um, but that concept of the duality between the two is also a symptom of the actual illness, which is the mind, or more so a lack of awareness, thinking in extremes. You can be happy and manifest your full potential. You can be extremely present to the moment, see something as if it was the first time you're seeing it, experience this moment as if you've never experienced anything like it before. Really take it in and do not layer it out with all of your knowledge and experience and not filter out the beauty of what's happening right now with your mind. And so, our natural state is a state of awareness, of taking everything in. And the mind can easily, because it's our strongest tool, become so dominant in filtering things out and sending us on a collision course toward our dreams in the worst way practice presence being aware of everything that's going on including the thoughts in your brain just witnessing them like you hear sounds that level of awareness not getting too caught up in what the mind is thinking or the emotions that you're feeling that sense of wholeness will make you whole and it will give you the real strength to manifest your full potential.